Uh, hey, y'all do me a favor. If people are on here saying stupid stuff, and yes, I said stupid because it's stupid. 150 people got saved. What? It, wh what? How many people got saved at your church Sunday night? Let's start there. This shuts the conversation down, y'all. Don't, don't argue with nobody. Just ask them. How many people got saved at your church Sunday? No, 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 I'm not. No, no, not the people who were mad at their last pastor because he held them accountable and they left mad. And then they came to join your church because their season shifted. Now, I'm not talking about those folks. I'm talking about folks who weren't in church, who felt something supernatural in your church and decided to partner. If you can't out soul win me, shut your mouth. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that's your response, William Murphy. That's your response. So when you have people who have a problem with the way that you have your services going on, because you're saying it's led by God, where people sit here and say that there should be a separation between the church and the world. The way that you respond to those people who say you shouldn't be swag surfing and walking it out in the church, which is supposed to be a holy sanctuary, a place in which God dwells. His house, people who have a problem with that, to those people you said, shut up. Shut up if you're not saving 150 people. If you're not serving, saving more people than me, then shut up. That's your response? Wow, that's a great response from a pastor, if I must say so myself. Wrong. Listen, first off, the Bible tells us to follow after peace with all men, but that is not what you did. In addition to that, rather than actually taking a second to see and understand why other people would have a problem with what you did, instead of doing that, you doubled down. You decided to stick your foot in the ground and say, I'm not going to move because what we did is what we believe is right. And guess what? To each man, they do do what they believe is right in their heart. But it only matters what God perceives to be right. Because God says that his people must be a holy people. His people are a peculiar people. What does holy mean? Holy means to be set apart, to be different. Peculiar means that you're not like everyone else. You're not reclaiming anything from the devil. You're not reclaiming a thing. Again, it was not designed for the church. It was designed for the world. So why are you bringing something that was designed for the world into the church? Can you explain that? That's right, because you're going to justify it, so you can't. Because anything you say is going to go against the word of God. And that's the part that needs to be understood. It's not okay for you to sit here and say that if you're not saving 150 people, then you can't say something as if that's some qualification that makes you a great pastor. Because the truth is, you lied. You lied saying that it was 150 people. Because I get it. We all embellish sometimes. We go ahead and exaggerate numbers and we exaggerate things, right? Guess what? We all saw the video. Look at it real quick. Look at the video. Listen, before anybody leaves this room, before anybody walks out of the door, there are people in this room who need covering. There are people in this room who need community. There are people in this room who need a church. People in this room who need a pastor. Y'all play me something for this moment here. There are people in this room who need a church and covering, community. Where are you? Where are you? If you're in this room and you know you don't, you're disconnected, just come to this altar. Just come. Just start walking this way. Just start walking this way. Welcome home. Welcome home. Come on, if you're in this room and you don't have a church, you're in this room, you don't have a pastor, just walk to this altar. Nobody's walking out of the room. These are life and death decisions that people are making. And I know you wouldn't dare walk out of the room. Come, come, come. You don't have to, you don't have to pray about this. You don't have to think about this. God has already dealt with your heart and you already know this is your church. You already know this is your church. You already know this is your church. Just come, come, come. You can ask questions later, but you know that the Spirit of God has been dealing with your heart. You know this is the place where God wants you to start over. Welcome home, sir. Welcome home. Will you do me a favor? Those of you in the online sanctuary, you need covering. You need community. 
Grab your phone. You're going to text 54244. You're going to text this word, DR Salvation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. DR Salvation. You're going to text that to 54244. This is where God wants you to reconnect with the body of Christ. This is the place where God wants you to start over. Who am I talking to in this room? Will you do me a favor? Look at your neighbor. Tell him this is the place God wants you to start over. Quickly for one moment, I believe God told me to do this. The word that you just heard, this prophetic decree that God gave me to speak over your life, it requires a seed. It's a really simple principle. There can never be fruit where there has never been seed. If what you just heard tonight, you know it was the Spirit of God speaking to you over your year, I want you to get a $52 seed. I want you to put a seed in the ground for every week this year. And I want you to decree and declare that God's going to do something supernatural every week this year. We all see in that video that 150 people wasn't up front. But I know what you're saying is people online, right? Isn't it funny that people can always make a statement without having to prove the statements that they make? Where is your proof? Where is your evidence? Where is your witness of 150 people? We know that's not true. You literally did not. Not only is it not true, but it doesn't even make sense because no altar call was actually given. Go back and look at the video. He never said, this is your moment to come to God. Those of you who have been lost and, and, and are looking for salvation, all those who are heavy laden and looking for rest, come to me. He's not telling them to come to God and get right. He's definitely not telling them to lead their sinful ways and come and choose God. He's not telling them that the lifestyles that they're living is not going to give them the 2024 that they're expecting. Why? Because what good is it living the 2024 getting all the prosperity that he's telling you you're going to get only to end up in hell anyways because you never actually did the work. You never actually produced the fruits of your faith that you say that you have. But you want to brag and say 150 people? There wasn't 150 people up there and you didn't do an altar call. What you did is an invite to join the church. That is what you, you told the people. You, you asked them, who wants to have what? A new year. Who wants to have a new you? You're welcome. You're welcome here. You welcome the people to join your church because really the issue, your, your goal is not actually to win souls. And I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I'm judging you in this moment. I am judging him, people. I'm sorry. You're, you're, <laughs> you're not worried. Your concern in this moment is not to save souls. Your concern is to actually produce the members so that way the money will grow up. Because the more members you have means more money you'll end up having. Which is why y'all teach y'all money. Which is why that seems the thing, be the thing that's most important to you, not the souls. And I'm sorry, again, I'm judging you. When I sit here and see a New Year celebration or a service where this is the perfect opportunity to tell these people who are happy that they made it through another year, that they can go into the next year differently. When I see these people here who are sincere and generally absolutely want God and there's no salvation given, but membership is given. Don't tell me that you're not showing what is really important to you. You are what's really important to you is the membership because you want the money. And I'm sorry, if I'm misspeaking and I'm misjudging you, I apologize. I'm just telling you the fruits that I'm seeing. If I'm looking at the wrong tree and I'm misjudging it, I apologize. But the, from the fruits that I see, it seems as though membership is more important to you than actually winning souls. And that's the sad part. That's the scary part. You're more concerned about people walking it out and swag surfing, knowing that those lyrics don't even match up to a child of God. They're not even, they're literally saying that people are a hoe. They're literally calling women different things and saying that you want, they, their pursuit is the money. Their pursuit is the lifestyle. When did God tell us, when did Jesus tell us to pursue those things? Never, never. So why are you telling the people to pursue something or allowing something to be played that isn't even lining up with what God said? There's a problem. And unfortunately, you being the head are the problem. And I'm not telling you to step down. I'm not telling you that you don't need to be a pastor like other people have. I get why they're saying this to you. All I'm saying is you have to take a step back and take a look at why people are saying that. Because the truth is our job is to not be a stumbling block to others. That is what our job is as believers. We are not to be a stumbling block to our brothers and sisters. We're not to be a stumbling block to those who seek, seek God and are looking for God but would choose against it because they see this kind of thing going on. And guess what? I'll even be nice in the 
If it was even possible for you to have gotten 150, which I don't agree and I don't believe happened, the only reason you would have gotten 150 people to feel as though they want to be saved is because they see no difference between the world and the church or your church. They see no difference. You mean to tell me if I'm somebody who's been sinning all my life, I'm committing for adultery, I'm fornicating, I'm lying, I'm stealing, I'm doing all these things that 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 through 11 said, you telling me that I can live this way and no one's going to ask me to change because the only thing they're looking for me to do is join a church? You're telling me that that's the salvation that's being given? Well, who, who isn't going to take that that doesn't know better? Who isn't going to be excited to take that? Of course they're going to want to join your church because you're not expecting anything to change. You're not, ex you're not asking anything of them. No change is required. But Jesus has always required a change. Jesus has never healed a person or come in contact with somebody and told them that they can leave the same way they came. Anytime someone was healed, just like the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, what did he tell her after she got up? And he, she, and he had to look out there and see where are your accusers and found that there was none. He told her to go and do what? Sin no more. What happened to the man that was lame and they had the, he couldn't get to Jesus. So they went on the roof, bust open the rooftop and dropped, lowered him down. What happened after Jesus healed him? He said, go and do what? Sin no more. Why are you not saying these things? Why are you, what, why is what you're saying different from what, God, what Christ said? If we're supposed to be in the image of Christ or following Christ, why is it that your words do not line up or match with Christ? That's the problem. That's the problem. You want to sit here talking about shut up. That doesn't even offend me because the truth is you're just truly showing with who you are and what you actually believe. And unfortunately, it doesn't look good. I love you, my brother. I love you and I will be praying for you. I will be, be, I will be praying for everyone that's around you because the truth is the body of Christ needs men like you. Why? Because you have influence. Because there's people who love your music and will follow you because of your music. But one thing I will not support and I will not do is I will not let my, my enjoyment or my love for a song that you may have done not make you, have me hold you accountable. Not have me make a statement to you telling you that you are in error. And not because you have bad intentions, because your intentions may have been good. But at the end of the day, if our intentions are good, but our results are bad, we have to step back and apologize and say, you know what? I'll do it different in the future. Not double down and say, this is what we've always done. We've been doing secular music. We've been mixing in the two. Why are you? Put a difference between what is holy and unholy. You don't join the two. You know what? One more thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me play this clip because I want people to I want people to be reminded of what you said. If you're not getting people saved, you have nothing to talk about. Okay, that's that's the end of that. That's the last time I'm gonna do that. Did I tell y'all the place that you are from is winning? So, well, I'm gonna say this one last time. I'm gonna say this one last time. If if my ministry offends you, unfollow me and don't ever come back. Because I'm not your man of God and God has assigned somebody else to speak to your life. So if the way that I do ministry offends you, unfollow me and never come back and I will see you in heaven. Hopefully. You said that if the way I do my ministry offends you, then you'd rather them not come. And matter of fact, leave. And when you leave, don't come back. That's your message to the people that because they have a problem or they're uncomfortable with the way that you do ministry. Remember what you called it, your ministry, not Christ's ministry, not God's ministry, not his church, which he died for, purchased with his blood and gave up his life to sacrifice and payment of that church. But your church, if they got a problem, then guess what they can do? Leave and don't come back. What kind of thing is that to say? Rather than saying, you know what, 
in the event that you believe that we're in error because of how we feel, why not say, you know what, I'm going to do a Bible study or I'm going to do a lesson showing you where God has given us these freedoms, where he has allowed us to actually live this way. He has allowed us to partake in these kind of secular music. He has allowed us to do these different things, which he hasn't. But why not take that stand if you really believe what you're doing isn't wrong? Why would you go ahead and tell somebody who's struggling to understand and feels uncomfortable with it that they can leave and not come back? I thought the whole point was about saving souls. What happened to leaving the 99 in search of the one? What happened to every soul being important? I guess it's not that important to you, right? Which is another reason why I keep saying that you're, you continually show that your fruits are not good. You continually show that what is important to you is not the soul. What is important is the membership. But I know what you'll say. If I was concerned about the membership, I wouldn't say to leave and not come back. I get, I get it. I get it. Yes, it seems like a double negative. It seems like something that kind of, it's an oxymoron, right? But it's not. Because the truth is, you want people who aren't going to challenge you, around you. You want people who are not going to question what you're saying, whether or not it's of God or not. That's who you want around you. You don't want the people that can think for themselves. You don't want the people that actually think and read this word. You don't want the biblical Bible believers. You want the new people from off the streets who are babes in Christ and don't know better. That's who you want. Why? Because you know they won't challenge you. Why? Because you know you can control them more easily. Why? Because you know that you can, you're able to do and move however you want without having to worry about a consequence or people leaving. That's why you want them versus the Bible believer. Let's call a spade a spade. Let's be real with what it really is, William Murphy. You're not concerned about souls. You're concerned about the members being there that you can control.